Hello, my friends. Welcome to another episode of Today with Ward. Today I have a friend, a new friend with me. I know he's going to excite you, inspire you, encourage you. We're taking a little bit of a different angle today. You know, we're all about souls, Israel, and revival. But we are made up of body, soul, and spirit. So body is important. Today we're going to talk to you about your body. I have a special guest, Doug Kaufman, a Vietnam vet, a nutritionist, a man that God is using to help transform men and women's lives around the world. And I know, friends, that you're going to be really, really excited. I want to encourage you right now, stop whatever you're doing, call your friends, call your family, tell them, tune into God TV right now. They're about to hear something they've probably never heard before in all of their lives. That's including yours. But before that, I want to remind you why we do what we do. We do what we do because God's given us a mandate to take the gospel message of Jesus Christ to the ends of the earth. We have feeds that go 24 hours a day, seven days a week to the continents of Europe, Africa, Asia, Australasia. Friends, we are in Africa. We are taking this gospel to over 300 million homes, but we need your help. Would you consider being a partner with us at God TV? Would you consider being a media missionary, helping us to take this gospel? You and I can't go to Australia or Africa or India tomorrow. But friends, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, this gospel goes. And we need your help. Take a look at this, and then I'll be back to introduce you to a very special guest, Doug Kaufman. Voices uniting. Hands raised. An atmosphere of expectation. Something inside begins to change. In these moments of coming together, you know with God, anything is possible. For over 20 years, God TV has committed to bringing you some of the biggest live events, and the best is yet to come. Who makes this possible? You. Become a partner today. Go online to god.tv slash donate or call the number on your screen today. Praise God, friends. Help us. Will you take this gospel message? Help us. Join with us. Hold our hands together. Let's, let's do this. Let's advance the kingdom of God. Let's take this message and continue to broadcast 24 hours a day. Doug, I'm so privileged to have you here today. Since I met you, my wife introduced me to your books and teachings many, many years ago. Somebody introduced her to you, I think, over 20 years ago. Uh, I know you have a, a radio program, a TV program. You have many, many books that we're going to talk about. You know, we have to look after our bodies. I actually feel convicted sitting here next to you because if they knew how old you were compared to me, I feel embarrassed. <laughs> I mean, you look great, you. but you weren't always great. Mm. I want to thank you, first of all, for your service. And I know you served in Vietnam, but you came home from Vietnam sick. Let's begin yeah. there. 1970, I go to Vietnam, two years of training, uh, hospital corpsman, U.S. Navy. They train you in emergency medicine, basically. So off I went, and the Marine Corps uses Navy corpsmen, not medics. So I'm assigned to 2,000 Marines. And I came home, 1971, sick, bleeding at the folds of my skin, stomach problems, all sorts of neurological problems. And I thought I had PTSD, which wasn't even named then, post-traumatic stress. I thought I had that. Mm. But then my boss at USC Medical School, Dr. Everett Hughes, said, did you see things a 20-year-old kid shouldn't have seen? And I said, nah, you see some stuff, but it's war. It's not pretty. And he said, it sounds to me like maybe you got into a worm. Did you eat raw fish? And I said, yeah, that's the Vietnamese way. We ate a lot of raw fish. So I went to the library. We didn't have Google searches in 1971. I went to the library, got a library card. And Ward, here's the way God worked in my life. I get a book called Parasitology. God opens it. I lay it on the counter, 1953, and it opens to a chapter 11 or 12 that said, yeast and fungus can parasitize man. 
So I'm not talking about a nematode, a worm, mm -hmm. but I had jungle rot all over myself. You know, wow. we didn't take a shower for a year. And this yeast or this jungle rot actually gains access into your bloodstream. And I came home a changed man, brain, you know, body, just had all sorts of health problems. Mm. And so as I began to read those chapters on yeast and fungi parasitizing man, I got it. Mm. The next chapter said yeast must eat in order to survive inside your body. And so the host being us begins craving pasta and bread. Hey, I'm a 21 year old guy back in Vietnam, beer, cookies, sandwiches and so forth. And it's funny the Sounds way- Sounds like staple diet to me. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny the way this organism becomes dominant wow. in your body and makes you crave certain eating patterns. Wow, well, wow. Well. Well, listen, I, you know, we say in mm. Barbados where I'm from, and I think we say it in England, maybe all over the world, the proof is in the pudding. Mm. Is that in the same in America? Same, same in America. Well, listen, if you don't mind me, I got to tell our viewers, you're what, 69? 69, yeah. This man is 69 years old. I'm 55 years old. I'm embarrassed to be sitting next to him. I'm going to do something with my life. I need your help. <laughs> and our viewers around the world need your help. I want you to know mm. that I met Doug, and it was divine. It was through a mutual friend, Bennett Luke. I met him in Pensacola, Florida. And um, Doug was thinking about doing some programming with God TV, but God had a different plan. God, God spoke to me, said, no, go meet with Doug and come up with a strategic partnership because people around the world need to hear what I have shown this man. So mm. I want you to take the next few minutes and just pretend that this is your show. <laughs> These are your viewers, and let them get to know you, because I, I really think, Doug, that we're supposed to do something greater together for our viewers, for our partners, and for the kingdom. There are people who get this show that are in starvation mode, mm. that don't have access to supplements or quality food like we do. And I think that's the magnetic attraction I had to God TV. Folks, if you only knew what I've learned and have taught physicians now for many years, Diet is essential. It's absolutely essential. You heard me say I began craving carbohydrates like potatoes and rice. I couldn't get enough of it. Little did I realize, nor little do you realize, you're feeding an organism in your body that probably shouldn't be there. It's a fungus. How did it get there? Antibiotics can take it there. Alcohol can take it there. The eating of corn or wheat or peanuts very often these uh, products are contaminated with a mold. And you think, Ward, that in America... You, you, just, know, hit, you just hit on two things right now. <laughs> Your diet, oh, right? <laughs> um, mine too, back then. Wow. Uh, so I changed. Yeah. And it's such a blessing that now I've been asked to give continuing medical education to doctors because they don't learn much about nutrition. And early in my career, I was very angry at doctors handing out pills, you know, doing all these procedures. Mm -hmm. But after my presentations, they're wonderful. They stand in line to ask me about yeast and fungus. Doctors learn this much about bacteria, mm -hmm. this much about virus, and nothing in a field we call mycology, the study of fungus. And yet, fungus and cancer, fungus and diabetes, fungus and obesity, they all have much to do with one another. Well, so, I mean, I'm, I am convinced that, that there are people mm -hmm. watching right now that have medical conditions. You know, I was talking to my wife last night. She, she suffers with asthma. We've prayed about it. Mm -hmm. um, we've taken her to specialists. She's seen mm -hmm. doctors. Her mother has it. And, um, but I heard, I heard you talking, and I watched one of your videos on fungus in the lungs, and mm -hmm. I was really intrigued about that. I'm sure there's somebody watching, and they're suffering from asthma or maybe... Um, this, uh, what do you call it when you're just coughing all the time? So it's a respiratory, they say it's a respiratory virus or bacterium, and normally, Ward, they get an antibiotic. They right. go from doctor to doctor and they get an antibiotic. Antibiotics fuel fungus. So if this is a chronic cough you've had, talk to your doctor about treating a fungal condition, not a bacterial or viral condition. And very often there's a little bit of mold in the home, a little bit of mildew in the home. Look at Leviticus, Leviticus 32, 34, on yes. through. Uh, where the Lord told Moses and Aaron, when you enter this land I'm giving you is your possession, if I put a spreading mildew in a house in that land. The NIV Bible says, why was mildew so dangerous? This was a fungus 
that was contagious, that could injure man. Mm -hmm. And so here we have thousands yeah. of years ago this being written and our doctors aren't learning it today in medical school. And that's amazing. There was a physical fungus and then there was a spiritual because it could get so bad God said you had to tear the whole house down. Or clothing, you know, yeah. there are rules. Yeah. I mean, it's so exciting to read all of that. Books of Moses, 32 references to oh. yeast. Most all derogative. Don't be like the yeast of the Pharisees. And yet, what do we do? We eat nutritional yeast. We eat mushrooms. We drink alcohol. That's all fashionable today. Maybe it shouldn't be. Well, we've got a couple minutes in this segment before I go to a break. But, I mean, it's so much for me to take in. And uh, I, I just know that our viewers are wondering. They have questions. You know, are they supposed to be taking supplements? How can they get more information? And and uh, we're going to have his website up, friend. You can go to his website. He has so many resources there. We, we're believing we're going to do something together. We're not exactly sure what it is. I need to hear from you if you need more of this information. Listen, you know the testimony of my wife. She had a parotid tumor. Many of you saw that. It, it went all over the world. We had over nearly one and a half million views on Facebook alone. And we showed that video. We prayed for a miracle in her life. God is a healer. And God heals, but God also uses doctors, mm -hmm. and God uses people like yourself to talk sense to us. God's interested in your body. He's interested in my body. He's interested in our body, our soul, and our spirit. So this angle on God TV today is about your body. Do you want to hear more about how you can improve your health? Yes, God can heal you, friends. We hear the miracles every day. But, my, but God didn't heal my wife, is my point. She had to go for surgery. But God used the surgeon and did a miraculous surgery. And we're believing God will do a miracle in your life as well. Just one more minute in this segment before we come back. The most exciting news today is the fungal link to cancer. Well, in 19, or 19, listen to me, in 2014, I wrote an article that was accepted in Oncology News, a good medical journal. And the article said... We have completely missed the fungal role in cancer. But in corn, in peanuts, there is a mold that grows called aspergillus. And this makes a poison called aflatoxin. You won't be tested on this uh, at home. <laughs> this aflatoxin is known to cause human cancer. And yet our oncologists are saying, we don't know why cancer exists. Yeah, we do very often. Well, well. We're going to have more with Doug Kaufman right after this. But we have something that we do, friends. It's a daily email that goes to hundreds of thousands of people at the moment. But you have to sign up for it. It's called God Daily. I get it every day. It's filled with blogs, with videos, with news. I really love it. It's one of the great things that God TV is doing around the world. We're going to have many articles on God Daily with Doug. We're going to have some supplements that we're going to offer exclusively to you, our partners around the world, that, that you may not be able to find anywhere else. And so I want you to sign up for God Daily. Take a look at this, and I'll be right back with Doug Kaufman. Sign up for our God TV daily email newsletter seven days a week. Details on the screen. You'll receive inspirational articles each day, as well as updates from God TV, programming alerts, and special offers. And as a welcome gift, you can download a free ebook from Bill Johnson entitled The War in Your Head. Sign up online today. Sign up today, friends. I know that you will be really, really blessed by the daily emails that you get. So, Doug, we've got um, a few more minutes to go. And, and uh, you do so much. You have a, a show called Know the Cause. And I know that that is viewed, um, that's viewed by probably millions of people. And, and we want to take your message and amplify it, take it as far as, as we can, Know the Cause. And we want to encourage everyone to go to your website and get more information. Um, but I know that there are also skeptics out there, and I, we understand that. I mean, we were all skeptical about one thing or another. Um, you know, some people, I remember when I first told my doctor I was going to see a, um, a natural doctor in California. He thought I lost my mind. <laughs> I mean, he really did. He actually swore at me. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I never went back to him after that either. But um, talk about that for a moment, because I know that you're also sharing what you're sharing with us with doctors. 
A little miracle happened in my life a couple of years ago. Our mutual friend, Bennett Luke, uh, had a physician that wanted to be on my show. He was doing some procedures, and I said, bring him on. He's a great guy. <clears throat> While he was there, he heard my passion about fungus, picked up a couple of my books, began reading it, and recontacted me. The next weekend, I was the keynote speaker at a big medical meeting. And he watched that speech on Saturday night at dinner. Sunday, he was a changed man. He said, you, he sent me an email, Ward, that said, my whole life, 25 years in internal medicine and pulmonology, my whole life has changed. I am now going to begin, because I'm a doctor who routinely writes a prescription for an antibiotic and hands it to his patients who talk like that or who cough, you know. And it wasn't bacteria, so he began doing a procedure called a bronchoscopy where he looks into the lungs of the patients. Hmm. 70, 80% of all those patients have fungal growth. Is that right? And uh, his name is Dr. Mukesh Saraya, and he's a wonderful man. Wow, so the antibiotics, all the medicine that they would be taking, it's not helping. I think, uh, look, in 1999, the Mayo Clinic said virtually 96% of all chronic sinus problems were due to fungus. Yet if you go to a clinic today with a sinus problem, you're going on an antibiotic. Wrong. You need to go on an antifungal, and then you need to starve it with diet. Your diet contributes to a lot of your health problems. Now my wife went on an antifungal for a while, but they must have given her the too high a dose, mm -hmm. and when they tested her liver, it was like emergency, stop everything you're doing. One of the problems with prescriptive antifungals, Spornox, Lamisil, there's all sorts of them, five or six of them, is that they're hepatotoxic, liver toxic. Um, so every couple of months you draw the blood. But God didn't put Spornox here, man made it. Mm. There are things like oregano and curcumin and vitamin C and vitamin D3 has huge antifungal properties. Okay. So what the audience needs to understand is you need to starve fungus, so eat vegetables, eat meat, eat eggs, eat nuts, except peanuts. And then you may need to also simultaneously kill the fungus with harmless supplements that are out there. And I was real excited talking with your son. Um, these do not have to be big bullets, expensive supplements. Good. It's amazing what God put here in plants that can help people. Well, look, here's what we want to do, friends. We want to come back after this and give you some practical things that you could do to just start working on your health right now. And I am going to take his examples. My wife is going to manage it and, and uh, dictate it over me. <laughs> right. And uh, I have a joke. She doesn't really say this, but I tell people that she always tells me to shape up or ship out. <laughs> so I really need to shape up, my friend. So we want you to shape up as well. God's interested in your spirit and in your soul. He's also, also interested in your body. So here's what we're going to do before we wrap this show up. I, I want to show that little intro with you and that doctor. Sure. Uh, let's show that. And that will give our viewers, uh, you know, a little behind the scenes of what a doctor is doing and thinking. And then we'll come back and give them some practical tips uh, improving their health. Is that okay? Wonderful. Take a look at this and we'll be right back. How often do you guys look at a physician and say, I wonder if he was a patient in that waiting room, how he would treat that condition? What if a lot of your patients are bronchial patients, right? Lung patients, pulmonary patients. So you got the chronic cough for three years. You got people with stuff growing in their lungs. You've got chronic sinusitis and just a head full of stuff that they can't get out. You've got asthma, COPD, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. Well, this physician, Dr. Mukesh Saraya, does see that all the time. So I got to ask you, I've been wanting to ask you for the years I've known you. The patient sitting in your waiting room, they're probably all talking because you're a doctor who knows the cause and who's helping him get better. Once he learned about mold, his world changed. What if you had asthma? What if Dr. Soraya had asthma? What would you do now differently than 27 years ago when you graduated from med school? Um, very good question, Doug. Um, so asthma is is uh, traditionally been considered to be a, a reversible airway bronchospasm, you know, meaning inhalers. You know, every four hours you're hitting on inhalers. Yeah, and then came along came the inhaled corticosteroids like Advair, Simocort, so on. And that did change the outcomes in terms of mortality and so on. But what a lot of people are missing is the, that not all wheezing is asthma. 
and wheezing could be produced by mucus plugs, you know, produced by allergens such as um, aspergillus uh, that are actually pathogens, you know, within the lung. Fungus. Fungus. Yeah. And I'm finding that to be more and more, especially sitting in Texas where there's horses around, you know, horse barns, you know, hay and, and so on. So, you know, what a lot of these folks, at 18-year-old I recently so you know, uh, worked around horses and hay all, all, all day, you know, for the last 15, 20 years of her life. And, uh, you know, when, when scoped, when, when go down with the bronchoscope, you know, what we find is plugs of mucus. Wow. Yeah, so this is kind of a bronchoscopic view. So you go into view. his lungs or her lungs? Yes. Okay. Yeah, passes pass the tube, you know, through the nose or the back right. of the throat, inside the, through the vocal cords, into the trachea, left and right lungs. So the, here's a plug of mucus that is blocking this airway. Wow. So the only thing open, this, this air passage, I would say, is blocked about 90%. So what's open is this much. Now, this is causing the wheezing in, in her, uh, in, in, you know, in her lungs that most people would treat with inhalers. When you, when you use an inhaler, what you're doing is you're dilating, a little, making a little bit of space around the mucus plug, but you're really actually not getting rid of the mucus. So what is going on is every four hours or you're either you're, you're, you're using your inhalers or you're using your nebulizer. And all you're doing is creating a little space around the, the plug of mucus. So this here is a plug of mucus that I had to literally pull out of the, the scope and flush this out because it didn't come through the suction channel. So these are plugs of mucus that had probably been sitting there for months, if not years. And, and this culture out, you know, mold when, when, when it's cultured. But I think a patient with asthma, you know, especially, you know, when they're wheezing, Mucus plugs might be the, the the reason. So basically what I would do when somebody that's kind of fresh to my practice and, mm -hmm. and, and has gone through rounds of antibiotics and steroids, I would go inside the lungs, I would look for these plugs, you know, that would not show up on regular chest x-rays or even a CT, you know, pull them out, send it off for cultures, you know, identify, you know, what is causing these. 90% uh, of them will show mold. What is the cause? The cause is mold. And, yeah. and a lot of it is environmental, you know. Um, uh, such as seen here with the, with the vents, you know, you can your air ducts are full of mold. You know, these are homes that uh, uh, some of them are, are, you know, basically been this way for 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 years, and they're inhaling the spores, which in turn is causing the irritation, the bronchospasms, and they become pathogens. You know, producing a lot of mucus that that plugs them up. What percentage of your patient population do you isolate mold from their bronchoscopy? It's safe to say close to 90%. So then we'll go back to that question I started with. If you were that asthma patient sitting in your waiting room or the COPD patient, chronic cough patient sitting in your waiting room, you'd probably lean on yeah, curcumin, Absolutely. maybe supplements, maybe a changed diet. Would that help? Uh, no doubt about that. So curcumin, um, or oregano, um, NAC, NSL, cysteine, um, uh, commonly you know, suggested in my, in my practice. Yeah. And, and uh, patients come back with feedback that that's unbelievable. Dr. Soraya, thank you for coming in. Thank you for having me. Diet that. and FUPO head, fungus until proven otherwise. Thanks again. Thank you. Well, welcome back. I should have warned you that some of that stuff was a little bit uh, queasy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, the mucus that he pulls out yeah. of people, um, when they wake up from that procedure an hour later, some of them emote. They begin just crying like a baby. They can finally breathe. Mm -hmm. They can go to bed without <clears throat> coughing. and It's very dramatic. And he's found, as he said, that upwards of 90% of those patients, that's not bacteria. That's mm -hmm. fungus. And yet no pulmonologist out there except him really knows this. We randomly hand prescriptions to patients because we have to see 30, 40, 50 patients a day. So listen, mm -hmm. talk about this for a minute. As I travel the world, and I know you do too, mm -hmm. There's some hotels that we go in, and guest houses and so on, even homes, older ones. Man, you can smell the mold in there. Mm -hmm. And I don't think people around the world realize how it's actually killing them. I was on an airplane the other day that they must have spilled water in the galley or something. And boy, you get on that airplane, thank gosh, I wasn't in first class. Because those people had to sit in that mold. As you got back to 38D, 38E, where I sit, mm -hmm. no problem with mold. Yeah, we don't <laughs> have these problems. Recirculating, sure. uh, recirculating <laughs> air. But this is a huge problem that was swept wow. under the carpet many years ago, really by insurance companies. Hmm. People were having their home remediated of mold, and the costs were higher than the value of the house. So insurance companies got together with groups of doctors and said, is mold really a problem? 
we denounce in science that mold create, well, little yeast problems, little itchy skin, ringworm, jock itch, toenail fungus. But then there's the mold that causes or induces diabetes or cancer. You know when we study diabetes and cancer, we have to give laboratory rats diabetes or cancer. Mm -hmm. You know how we do that? We inject a mold into them and they all get diabetes and cancer. I had no idea. Yeah, and scientists don't either. They don't recognize that what you're injecting in that rat is a poison made by a fungus and they all get cancer. I wonder if we're being exposed in homes, airplanes, wow. et cetera, to the same So mold. we're breathing that in. I mean, I've had to check out of hotels. Yeah, me too. Me too. Be and you can see the vents, you know, they're mm -hmm. all black. Mm -hmm. When Ruth and I sold our house uh, many years ago, the home we raised the kids in, we were looking for a smaller home. We began to look for nice homes out east of Dallas, where I live. Um, and the realtor had no idea, but we'd walk into a home, whew, and this was a beautiful, expensive home. The cleanest homes in America are sometimes the most contaminated with mildew. Go to Home Depot or Lowe's or any of these places and buy a $20 mold test plate. Set it out in your house, follow the directions, and watch in two or three days the gray or the green fuzz that grows. I didn't know there was such a thing. Mm -hmm. So yeah. do that, test, test your mm -hmm. house, go to your local hardware store and, and see if they have a mold test kit. Listen, we've got two minutes left mm -hmm. in this program. We're gonna have you on again for another one, because there's more we need to talk about. But before we go, talk to our viewers, give them some practical tips on how they can be working on their health in well, the meantime. So one of the problems that's huge in America, I don't know if it is where you're watching, is obesity. And the answer is relatively simple. What makes bread rise? Could that same yeast be growing inside of you and slowly, slowly, slowly taking effect and, and making you rise just like the bread? Uh, folks, what you got to do is change your diet. Avoid yeast, just like the Old Testament is filled with this. Avoid yeast. Don't be like the yeast of the Pharisees, derogatorily. Change your diet. As far as supplements, one of the least expensive is also one of the best. It's called apple cider vinegar, $6 at a store. Teaspoon of that a couple times a day helps remediate the mold inside your body. Check your home. If you're always sick, there's something in your home, more than likely. How is your pet? If your pet is losing its fur, it's scratching itself, it's dying of liver disease or diabetes, then you can bet there's something in that home that's causing that. It's nine pounds, you're 200 pounds. So it's gonna take you a while longer. Wow, that's a true, man. I'm feeling convicted. If I had a keyboard player, I'd come I saw to the you altar. Sitting there. I saw you sitting there going. <laughs> Listen, this is really great stuff. We, we need to have you back. Friends, are you enjoying this? Would you let me know, please? Would you send me an email to God TV and let me know that you want more of this? We're doing this for you. We're not doing this for each other. I can talk to him privately. But we've brought him on the show to talk to you around the world about your health. God is interested in your health. He's interested in your body, your soul, and your spirit. So would you write to me, and would you go to Doug's website and write to him? Would you call him, click on him, um, Google him, do whatever you have to do to let us know that you want more of this type of programming on God TV. We really believe that God will use Doug and what he's doing to help you to improve your life and to give you a better life. So as we close, Doug, thank you for being here, friends. Thank you for watching. We love you. It's because of you that we do what we do. You are media missionaries, and you help take this gospel around the world. Until next week, God bless you. Tell somebody about Jesus. Bye-bye. Thank you for watching Today with Ward. Please join us again next time. In the meantime, we'd love to hear from you. Please email today at God.tv. Also, please consider becoming a God TV partner. For more information, visit God.tv.